Good evening and welcome to Tiger Volleyball on the Washita Sports Digital Network presented by Taylor King Law. I'm Chase Hartzell joined by Chris Gay and for the second consecutive Tuesday night we are back at the Sturgis Physical Education Center for Great American Conference Volleyball. This time it'll be between the visiting Blossoms of the University of Arkansas in Monticello and the hometown Washita Tigers. Chris, coming into this matchup, both of these two teams playing in the Tiger Ready Invitational. For Washita, it had been a bit of a struggle entering the tournament, having lost their last three. However, they really bounced back winning three of their, their four matches that they played this weekend. They really did. Their only loss came against Alaska Anchorage, a very solid team out of the Great Northwest Conference. But they bounced back with wins against Lee and then two wins, two consecutive wins against Christian Brothers and Union. But for Monticello, they, they did struggle. They did find a little bit of success uh, having a game going to five sets at one point against Lee in the Invitational. One thing to mention, too, about that Seawolves team is that they went undefeated on the weekend in their first ever road trip to Arkansas. Only lost one set, and it took till that last match of the weekend. A very impressive Seawolves team, but this Tiger team seems to be generating a lot of chemistry here, starting to build up that experience, and we'll see if that'll pay off in the conference schedule. Yeah, they really do. I mean, this is a year that all the impact freshmen from last year are now sort of leaders on this team. And then they're sort of mentoring a lot of freshmen that are getting some opportunities so far this season. Uh, a couple names to mention as far as freshmen. Kylie Kiskin uh, has really been impactful uh, as sort of a, a setter and then, or uh, excuse me, as a libero. And then Savannah Whitaker has really had uh, a solid last few games filling in for Riley Brazil, who I think took some time for rest, uh, nursing an injury. I, I'm pretty sure we'll see her here today, though. She are now sort of leaders on this team, and then they're sort of mentoring a lot of freshmen that are getting some opportunities. Consistently making good plays, ended up leading the match in hitting percentage above 700, a very impressive set from her. And now it'll be interesting to see how the Tigers do against a, another Great American Conference challenge. Before we do that, though, we do want to recognize a couple of Tiger players that were actually named to the Tiger Ready Invitational All-Tournament team. Kayla Steinmeier, a senior for the program and the kills leader for the Tigers coming into this match, made the team. And second on the team in kills, just one kill behind her, is Emily Adams. She also made the All-Tiger Ready Invitational team. Well, and I'd like to further extend uh, sort of congratulations to, uh, well, what Washita likes to do, they like to do team awards every week. And uh, freshman Emma Hill was voted Impact Player of the Week. And Riley Brazil and Emily Adams were voted as Teammates of the Week. And Kylie Kiskin, who I mentioned earlier, was named Tiger of the Week. Well, it looks like we are about to get the starting lineups for tonight's GAC matchup. So for that, we're going to send it down to one of our own OSDN alum, Matthew Branch.
Well, there you have it, the starting lineups for tonight's Great American Conference matchup between Arkansas, Monticello, and Washita. Thanks again to Matthew Branch on the public address announcing, also the Assistant Director of Athletic Communications here at Washita. Proud to see our alums staying with the program, and not only that, but really making a name for themselves in the industry. But we are just about set for what should be an exciting conference matchup between these two squads. Both of these teams looking for their first conference win of the year. And you know that both teams are going to bring that extra energy, going to be very hungry for that first win to really start the road towards the postseason. Again, it's early in the regular season, but you really want to establish good footing to establish a solid foundation for the rest of the year, Chris. Yeah, they, they really do. And I think for Monticello, they're going to do it on the back of Jasmine Welton. So far this season has 81 kills, which is first on the team. And... She's just been one of the better players in the conference, one of the better outside hitters. Even though UAM has struggled, she has been definitely a bright spot. And on the defensive side, Abriel Jordan has 22 blocks on the season, which has is just an incredible number. She's kind of a tough player to get the, the, the ball over at six foot, so should be very interesting, and I imagine those two players will have outstanding nights. And something different that we're seeing tonight, we've seen Avery Jouse start most of the matches this year at Libero, and say that's going to be Kylie Kisgen here tonight. Both of them will be in the starting lineup. Just a little bit of position change. Yeah, I imagine that won't stay sort of the same throughout the year, depending on how she plays tonight. Coach, Coach Frizz is just sort of – Still trying to experiment with different players on a roster and within the starting lineup. Now we will see the opening serve from Courtney Hansen, the sophomore from Arlington, Texas. We're underway at spec. UAM looking for the early kill. Nice dig there by Joust. But it's going to stay on the Tigers' side, and that's a point for the Blossoms. Yeah, that's always a difficult situation off the reception. Whenever it hits the net, it's really difficult to do anything else about it. Zoe Finkler set to serve it away for UAM. Blossoms with the early 1-0 lead. And it's wide to the right. Service error, and it's a point for Washita. Riley Brazil. Set to serve it away for OBU. Low dig that time from Finkler. Now looking for the kill. It's blocked, but fortunately for the Blossoms, goes out of bounds on the right side, out of, out of the line, and it'll be a point for UAM. Well, I do have to comment on the Blossoms. It's very early in the game, but they're already playing with so much energy and passion. They definitely love what they're able to do. Steinmeier with authority. The Tigers' kill leader adds one more to her ranks. Yeah, make that 106 on the season. The first of what could be many tonight for the senior as Gardner serves it away for the Tigers. Looking for the kill on the left side. It's deflected, set by Hansen, and it's that trademark misdirection. Looking for the kill again. It's too strong over the back line, and Washita takes the lead for the first time tonight. 
Well, Hanson's misdirection play definitely worked. Didn't get the point, but it caused them to scramble, and they just didn't have a great offensive set there. I'm thinking maybe somebody was over the center line. As one of the officials is talking it over with Coach English. Tigers on a three-point run right now, and Gardner set to serve it away once again. Another low dig for the Bull Weevils. Brazil setting up for Steinmeier. Great effort by Finkler to keep it alive. Now Adams looking for the kill. It's a dig again by Finkler. Now a kill on the far side. It's blocked. The Bull Weevils recover yet again. Good volley between these two teams. Setting up for Steinmeier, and it's blocked at the net. Yeah, that was a very good rally. UAM was hanging in there. They weren't able to get really anything established on offense. No real set play, but they were able to get it off the block there. Abriel Jordan, the junior, and Jalen Scroggins, the freshman, teaming up for the block at the net that time, and the Blossoms back within one. But Haley Fairchild extending that lead right back out to two with a kill. Yeah, she's been one of the most consistent players for Coach Frizz's group the last two seasons. An outstanding player, is very versatile, is a very good defender as well. Church with the serve for the Tigers. Trying to use the feather touch that time, but pushed it a bit too far to the left. It goes out of bounds, and that'll be a point for OBU. Yeah, I, I don't, don't, don't like that, that play there. I thought it was a, a good idea, just kind of an awkward positioning. Bit of a push there from UAM. Fairchild with another kill. Yeah, no one was in the back there. It was a reception error, but there was nobody in the back. Or excuse me, it, it was just off their hand. Nobody in the back to come save it. That was good hustle by Adams there just Again, but a lot of that had to do with Kellen Church being the server. She is definitely one of the better servers on this, on this team, and it's become sort of her specialty. That's a block at the net for Washita, Haley Fairchild, and Kayla Steinmeier on the play. Yeah, Monticello, they just have to react quicker. Wash oh, and they're going to take a timeout, but Washita... Gotten out to a six-point lead. The Tigers trailing two to one early, but they have bounced back in a big way, taking eight of the last nine points. As we go to our first break of the night, your score in the first set, Washita nine, UAM three. We'll be back with more Tiger volleyball after this timeout. Three. This is Kellen Church. Thanks for tuning in to the Washita Sports Digital Network. Make Print Mania in downtown Arkadelphia your place to get embroidery, screen printing, trophies, and more. Drop by their store on Main Street in downtown Arkadelphia or visit their website at printmaniatees.com to see how they can help your business or group. Need a shirt for an event? Let Print Mania take care of that. Need promotional materials for your business or organization? You can let Print Mania take care of that too. A family-run local business in Arkadelphia, Print Mania has been serving the public since 1992. Call Print Mania today, 870-246-3803. We welcome you back to Tiger Volleyball on OSDN, getting right back into the action as that one is blocked, but it goes out of bounds, and that'll be a point for the Blossoms out of the break. Yeah, Washita miscues are sort of what Monticello is Going to try to live on here. Low line drive serve, can't get over the net. It's another point for OBU. And the Tigers back out to a six point lead as Avery Japs checks in and she is set to serve it away for her squad. Tigers wearing the white uniforms tonight. UAM in the black jerseys with the white sleeves. As Japs makes a diving effort. 
but to no avail, that'll be a kill for UAM. And guess who it was? It was Jasmine Welton, exactly who I talked about at the beginning of the game. But now, hold on a second. It's going to be a conversation. It seems like they've retroactively awarded the point to the Tigers. Yeah. Taking it away from UAM. And going to have a conversation with the line judges. Looks like Coach English was not satisfied with the call from the line judge. No, I, I definitely wasn't. You could, you guys uh, listening at home couldn't, but we could. She was calling out one of them. Making sure her team gets everything that they're owed right now. And Stasha Adams going to have conversation with Coach English. And I'm thinking Washita still gets the point. I, I that one kind of surprised me. I was I didn't think I, I I don't know what the call was. I I thought Welton got the point there. But regardless, Tiger ball and Tiger point. Joust with the service over the back line. Service error. And the Blossoms will get that point right back. Going back a couple plays ago, they're officially calling it an attack error by Jasmine Welton. It must have, it was pretty close to that back line. I didn't think it was out, but it must have been a little, a little farther than my angle will allow. Fairchild looking for the kill that time. Came up empty handed. Good recovery by Kellen Church. Now Brazil looking for the kill and she's got it. Jordan Ware tried to make a play. Nonetheless, the sophomore for the Tigers from the Lone Star State coming up with another point. However, the Bull Weevils or the Blossoms come back with a point of their own. Yeah, as I mentioned, they're making their money off of Washita's miscues. And if Washita wants to pull away with this one, they got to really stop making these little mistakes. Excellent play again at the net by the Blossoms. Yeah, that was definitely not a miscue by Washita. That was just a bet that was just better defense, especially by Jalen Scroggins. But it's really difficult to get anything over that six foot blocker. Brazil looking for the kill. Nice dig by Adams to save it. And a bit of miscommunication there. And I believe, Chris, that's the phrase you like to use sitting around the campfire. Yeah, that's exactly what happens. <laughs> they were just sitting there watching it. They were like, oh, are you going to go get it? No, you're going to go get it. And by the time they decided to make a move, they already hit the floor. And point for Washita. Looks like they were saying it was hit twice. Well, they must have a much better eye than I do because I sure didn't catch it. Looking for the kill. And that one had some steam on it. Yeah, it really did. Kiskin just, it was a good reaction, but with that much power behind a single play or a single uh, spike, man, that. Just can't really control that very well. Misdirection by Courtney Hansen, and like we've seen so many times, picking up the point with some trickery. Yeah, and it looked as if Emily Adams had received it out of bounds. You really could have just let that one go, but uh, it still worked out for Washita. Sliding dig by Kizgin, setting up for Adams. Great save by Silva. 
Now the Tigers got to regroup on their own side. Adams, her kill attempt is deflected. Another chance for the Blossoms. That'll be a point for UAM. As it was determined that the ball had been held up a bit there by one of the Tigers. Yeah, I think that was pushed up maybe by Hanson. I'm not too sure. I can't see from my angle, but that yeah, was a good point for UAM. Here's the set. And hold on. Now we're going to have a conversation between the center court judges. And Coach English is not happy with the conversation that's going on. And it will be, I guess that is a point for Monticello. Looking for the kill, that's Steinmeier. Fingler did her best effort there to adjust on the fly. But too strong from Steinmeier and the Tigers have extended their lead to seven. Yeah, when Steinmeier's, when she's got all her power behind it, it's you can't really receive it. Blossom's looking to respond and they do just that with the kill from Jalen Scroggins. Yeah. Scroggins, one of many freshmen on this Young Blossoms team, a team that only has one senior on its roster, that's Stasha Adams. Well, you can tell with Adams, she's been the vocal leader, which makes total sense being the lone senior on the squad. Meanwhile, Steinmeier looking to strike for another one. That one ended up hitting the top of the partition, and it's a point for the Tigers. Looked like all the coaches for UAM were just upset with that call. They believed it was off of one of the Tigers' fingertips, and it should have been their point. Well, despite the seven-point lead, UAM, they're, they're hanging in there. They're hanging around. They're not going away easily. Hanson with the set. Now Church looking for the kill. And she does exactly that. A point from the senior out of Jonesboro, Arkansas. Well, now another timeout for Coach English's crew. Be interesting when she cooks up here to try to get them out of an eight-point deficit. Well, it looks like the Tigers are picking up right where they left off at the end of the weekend, winning six of the seven sets that they played on Saturday. Meanwhile, here in set one, it's been all Tigers. But we have seen flashes of brilliant plays from the Blossoms. We'll see if they can lock in as this contest goes along. They really have. They, Like you said, they've had flashes. But they really have to get Jasmine Welton more involved. Uh, she's one of their lead. I mean, she is their leader in kills, perhaps her best offensive weapon, and just haven't seen too much of her today. The Blossoms would definitely like to improve that hitting percentage a bit if they could too. Going into the break, a 13% hitting percentage compared to the Tigers' 267 mark in that category, 26.7%. Serve from Church. Now the Blossom's getting set. It's close, but it stayed inside the line. Point for the Blossoms. Actually, I have to disagree with you. It was not inside the line, but I think it was off of Kiskin. I think her arm inadvertently went out to try to get it. It would have been out of bounds. Or maybe, I don't know if it was her necessarily, but somebody deflected it. Feather touch from Fairchild almost got the kill. Tigers able to recover, but right into a block from UAN. Leading the charge that time for the Blossoms, it was the junior, Campbell Horn. Tigers lead by six, 
make that seven off of another kill from Haley Fairchild. That's her third of the night. Yeah, Washita just has so many different weapons that they can use. Steinmeier is great. Obviously got to see Fairchild. There's Brazil. And Emily Adams also there as well. And that, that was a blunder there. That definitely hurts the Blossoms a lot. And you could see the disbelief on the face of Evelyn Dang that time. She thought she was right there to make the play and it just slipped off of her hand that time. Sliding dig by Kisgen. Brazil, another kill for the sophomore out of Texas. She ties Fairchild for the team lead and kills with three. And now the magic number for the Tigers is four, trying to claim that first set. That'll be another kill for the Blossoms. Yep, they definitely found that right corner was not, that right back corner was not very well protected and took advantage of it. Got the point. Adams with the serve. It was a line drive. Brazil responds with a kill. Her fourth. Brazil led the Tigers in kills with 300 last year. And although she's currently not leading the team in that category, always a threat to be right there at the top of the list. Big block there for the Blossoms. Well, I think part of being one of the top players in the GAC means that as a freshman, means as a sophomore, teams are going to be paying attention to you a lot more. It's going to be a little difficult to get the same type of separation that you did as a freshman when no one knew who you were. But that also means that things open up for her teammates. That's why we've seen a lot of Haley Fairchild and even more Steinmeier this season. The bowl weavers following up the block from Jasmine Welton with a kill from Jasmine Welton. What a play. Also in on that last play with her on the block, that is. That was Kerrigan Biggs, the freshman. Misdirection from Hansen. One-handed save. That was a nice play by Silva. Miscommunication, but Kisgen just able to get it over. Now looking for the kill. Bullweevil's able to recover. That's another kill for Jasmine Welton. And Chris, I think the Blossoms took some notes from your talk during the timeout because we've seen a lot more of Jasmine Welton out of the break. Well, and they should have because she's an excellent player just as a sophomore and really their best player. And they've been going to a lot of different players in this game, but sometimes, and it's always good to give people, to get other people involved. But sometimes you just got to keep going to your best player time after time after time until it stops working. Meanwhile, the train keeps rolling as Jalen Scroggins picks up another for the Bull Weevils on a kill. That's going to take us to the first time out of the match for the Tigers. With that, we're going to take a break ourselves. Your score heading into the break. No matter where you go in Arkansas, you'll probably run into someone you know. That personal connection is what I love about this state. And it's why we have offices and people across Arkansas. People who share your interest and care if you've been hurt. A local team who will be on your side, by your side. So if you were injured in an accident, call us at 1-800-CAR-WRECK. No matter where you live in Arkansas, we have an office nearby. We'll be on your side, by your side. Captain Henderson House. We're a home to call your very own when you're away from yours, with a porch to end your night on, surrounded by friends sharing stories and old times, and a yard with memories of summertime weddings and picnics after the game. We are so thankful for the life this house has seen for nearly 150 years. 
Come stay with us and join in on our stories. Captain Henderson House, in and events. Welcome back to Tiger Volleyball on the Washita Sports Digital Network, presented by Taylor King Law. The Blossoms currently on a run, but the Tigers looking to stop the bleeding, and that's exactly what they do. Riley Brazil finding the open space in the middle of the floor, and now the Tigers are just two points away from claiming set number one. Oh, what I mentioned with the Blossoms was to feed your star players, and that's what the Tigers are doing. In order to go to victory, you, get, you put it in the hands of a player like Brazil, players like Adams, who's also in as well. Let them take you to the finish line. That last kill from the Tigers ends a four-point streak for UAM. We'll see if the Tigers can carry that momentum to help them get those two set clinching points. Brazil with a dig on the run set by Hanson Jouse. Able to angle it to the empty space on the other side of the floor. And it's set point for the Tigers. Well, the defensive specialist getting in and sort of becoming an offensive specialist with that kill right there. Read the defense perfectly. No, knew nobody was going to be home in that middle section. Took advantage. There's the dig by Adams. Set now looking for the kill. That's Welton. It's blocked. They'll say it's deflected. That is the 25th point of the set for Washita. And with that, the Tigers claim set number one. So despite a late run there from the Cotton Blossoms, at the end of the set, the Tigers managed to hold on. And they are now just two sets away from claiming their first Great American Conference victory of the year. We're about to take a timeout here as the team switch sides. You're watching Tiger Volleyball on the Washita Sports Digital Network, presented by Taylor King Law. Uh, I've heard people say, oh, a cheetah. Oh. Uh, I've heard people. Uh, I've heard people say, oh, a cheetah. Oh, Washita. A cheetah. Oh, a cheetah. Is it pronounced oh, a cheetah? Searching for Washita Baptist University. <laughs> Back in Texas, everybody pronounces it Wichita, but really, it's Washita. 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 How would you pronounce it? Washita. Washita. It's Washita Baptist University. Get it right. It's Washita, people. It's Washita. Washita. Make Print Mania in downtown Arkadelphia your place to get embroidery, screen printing, trophies, and more. Drop by their store on Main Street in downtown Arkadelphia or visit their website at printmaniatees.com to see how they can help your business or group. Need a shirt for an event? Let Print Mania take care of that. Need promotional materials for your business or organization? You can let Print Mania take care of that too. A family-run local business in Arkadelphia, Print Mania has been serving the public since 1992. Call Print Mania today, 870-246-3803. Visit the Washita Campus Store for all your Tiger apparel, merchandise, and gifts. If you need something to wear to show your Tiger pride, stop by the Washita Campus Store on the bottom floor of the Evans Student Center to grab a t-shirt, sweatshirt, polo, or more. If you can't stop by the store on campus, visit us online at bookstore.obu.edu. Make your purchase and we'll send it to you. Support the Tigers by checking out the Washita Campus Store. Go Tigers! Barry and Turnage, we specialize in bringing the law to your corner. We are dedicated to understanding what results you want and to helping you understand what actions we can take on your behalf. With over 30 years of experience and a proven track record of success, Barry and Turnage is here to lead you down a path to the results you need. We will work with you every step of the way to make sure that you understand the choices you are making and feel empowered to make them. Barry and Turnage, serious injuries require serious attorneys. Welcome back to Tiger Volleyball on the Washita Sports Digital Network presented by Taylor King Law. The Tigers facing a little bit of adversity late in that first set, Chris, as the Blossoms managed to put together a streak of four straight points. However, the Tigers respond out of the break with a streak of three points of their own. Yeah, they're just carrying on their success of this past weekend and just really showcasing their versatility with their different offensive weapons and Monticello just couldn't really control that 
in that moment. But they did have, you know, a little bit of their run showing why they are in the Great American Conference as well. Coach Frizz going over some last second assignments for the Tigers. Set to start off the second set for the Tigers on the floor. It'll be Hanson, Gardner, Brazil, Church, Jouse, and Kisgit. You could just tell, even though that the Blossoms are down by one set, they just still have so much energy and passion coming into this next set. And a lot of that is from Stasha Adams, their lone senior, and I believe she's also their team captain. Close play, but that's a point for the Tigers. Credit the kill to Gardner. Well, we didn't get to call her name a lot in that first set. We were talking a lot about Brazil and Steinmeier, but Garner's another player that, as a freshman, she's really made a name for herself on this team. Hanson with the serve for the Tigers. And she's got a service ace. Yeah, one of the best on the team at just that, her and Kellen Church especially. And if I'm not mistaken, Chris, she leads the team in that category by a pretty large margin. Yeah, she does, and she definitely likes to take charge as well, trying to get the ball boy to give her a ball. Nice save there by Hanson, setting up for Adams. Now a kill attempt for the Blossoms. But to no avail, credit the kill to Jalen Scroggins. Yeah, Gardner just trying to react, just couldn't really get that ball over the net and just couldn't exactly help her teammates out. So over the back line, that's another point for the Tigers. And Kayla Steinmeier checking in. So coming into this match, Courtney Hansen was actually tied for a share of the team lead in aces, sharing that with Avery Jouse. The player that earlier, Chris, we talked about her defensive prowess, but she's created plenty of points for this Tiger squad as well. Diving effort, and she keeps it alive. What a play by Kisgen. Setting up for the kill again, Kisgen. Helping the Tigers recover, Steinmeier. Her kill attempt is deflected. Looking for Welton on the other side. Feather touch. Neither team wanting to give in. Now just going for the push. Tigers with a chance to set up. And Gardner ended up coming up a bit short on that kill attempt. Yeah, I, I'm not, I'm thinking it was just based off where it hit her hand or didn't hit her hand, just was a little, don't think it was miscommunication, just a little strange for Gardner. Imagine that's not going to be a consistent mistake that she will make. And even with the best, you often see some of those timing issues come up from time to time. Blossoms pick up another point to tie it up at three. Yeah, they're playing well right now. Of course, both of these teams tied at three, but being very even in their production right now. And took some friendly fire from her teammate there on the serve. Now we'll get to see Leah Gardner serve it away for Washita. Long kill attempt that time goes over the back line. And it will be a point for Washita. A little bit of an early jump there on the kill attempt, but it does go back over. And Steinmeier 
Responding with a strong kill attempt of her own. That one will count for a point for the Tigers. And the senior has Washita's lead up to three. The serve staying with Gardner. Long serve and smart play there by Finkler, the freshman, able to just duck down knowing where she was on the court. Yeah, exactly. And that's something that a lot of freshmen trying to make a name for themselves on the team. They will go for anything, but it was good patience and a good eye by Finkler. Low serve, but Kisgen was able to get it up. However, Adams in a tough spot there trying to set it. And it will be a point for UAM. Well, that's one of many times that that's sort of happened today. Not sure if there's something wrong with the ball or if it's just an execution error. And it's still early in the season too, Chris, so you're gonna see some miscommunications as teams and players get back in the swing of things. So the Tigers get the point, and now the serve will be with Kellen Church. Here's the set, now looking for the kill. That's Welton. Perfect execution, finding the back right corner. Yeah, those corners are a tough spot for teams to defend. They're usually wide open, but they're also the hardest spot to put a ball directly in, so just a good aim there by the Blossoms. Meanwhile, Steinmeier able to have her block attempt deflected backwards for the kill. Avery Jouse entering this match. She was tied for the team lead in aces. Blossoms recover. Goes over the back line, and that's a point for the Tigers. Yeah, the line judge initially called that it was in, but did change his call. Did look like it was out. Powerful kill that time from Campbell Horn. Stepping up and making a great play for the Blossoms. We'll see if that gives them the momentum that they need to get right back in it here in set number two. Well, they're playing it close, only down two. This set definitely has been a lot of back and forth action. Fairchild a bit too strong on the kill attempt. And the Blossoms draw within one. Long serve goes over the back line, and that'll be a point for UAM, or excuse me, for the Tigers off the service error by UAM. Adams definitely puts a lot into those serves. Just a little too much there. Nice recovery there from the Blossoms. Brazil looking for the kill. It's deflected. Great save by Kellen Church. Now another chance for Brazil. Hansen looking for the misdirection. Pushed too far to the right. Yeah, she just really what didn't have an eye on where she was going and pushed with the left on the right side. That was just a great serve there for the Blossoms is Avery Joust was in position to make the play, but it was at such a tough angle that she wasn't able to get the dig. The serve staying with Silva. Yeah, Hanson was in the net there. She had tried to go for the block initially. The Blossoms hit just kind of went over her hands and her momentum just took her into the net.
The Blossoms have taken five of the last six points. Tigers looking to get some momentum back. Almost a great play to do it right there. Blossoms not able to recover in time, so the Tigers do end up with the point. Stasha Adams looked like she took a pretty nasty spill that time, but she's going to get up. Well, that, that's sort of what happened. Adams and Bruna Silva were both, excuse me, Silva were both going for that ball, and Silva sort of just like tripped on top of her, sort of landed on her back, and Adams took the, the bulk of that blow. Set by Hansen now looking for the kill. That's Brazil. It's deflected and out of bounds. Point Tigers. Yeah, Brazil has definitely been, I'd say, the, the top player in this game for the Tigers. Definitely in this set alone. She's up to seven kills on the night. Here's the set by Hansen. Looking for Gardner. Did it stay in? Yes, it did. Found the back left corner. And the Tigers up to a two-point lead now. Blossoms getting a much needed point there to even the score, or excuse me, to draw within one. Given how close this set has been, Chris, though, with all the momentum swings, we've almost expected to see the score evened up on multiple occasions. Yeah, and you could tell for a moment that Washita is getting, a, getting away from it a little bit, and uh, but nope, just like that Monticello, Tied it back up, and you can feel now that it's just going to keep going back and forth this whole, the whole rest of this set. That's the equalizer. We're tied at 13 all. And although this set has been remarkably close, if you, if you exclude the starting tie that we had, that's only the third tie of this set. Finkler tried to make the play on the dig there, but ended up being a long ball off to the side, and it's a point for Washita. Again, it was Riley Brazil on the kill. Continues to be the top player in this game for Washita. But again, the momentum swings back and forth, back and forth as the Blossoms once again knotted up at 14 all. Well, I like the idea from Steinmeier. Nobody was in that back row there, and she thought that she could that she could catch the defense off guard. Just a little strong on that hit. Gardner, strong kill attempt that time. But the Blossoms do recover, set by Hansen. Now a chance for Emily Adams, finding the open space. And that's a kill for the sophomore out of Martin, Texas. Yeah, Emily Adams quite often has the ability to show off her strength on a lot of those kill attempts. That time just showing off her touch and her thought process and her IQ there. Steinmeier, strong kill attempt. It's going to be a tough play at the net. Adams again. Using a bit of a feather touch there, finding the open space on the front part of the floor over there on UAM side. Yeah, they're sending two blockers, and there's no help in that middle. Adams has seen it both times, and he's going to keep seeing that and trying to take advantage. What a strong kill in response, though, from Jalen Scroggins. The freshman has had a strong showing tonight. And she's a big reason why her team is within one here in set number two. Tigers leading the overall match one set to zero. Good recovery there from the Tigers. Another chance for the Blossoms. That's Welton. She finds the back corner. Empty space. And it's an equalizing kill for the Blossoms. When in doubt, go to Welton, and she's going to come through. And that's exactly what happened. Nobody in that back left corner took advantage right away. Adams 
Her kill attempt is deflected. Now a chance to regroup. That's Welton sending it back over. Said by Hansen. Fairchild's kill attempt is blocked at the net. That is Welton and Jordan in there on the play for the Blossoms. And now a timeout by Coach Frizz trying to get her Tigers to break away more. Well, Chris, now we get a chance to catch our breath a bit here and talk about what an excellent set this has been. Both teams have had some great plays. Yeah, they, they really have. And I think a lot of people in anticipation of this match were expecting Washita to almost run away with it. But Monticello has hung in there for a long portion of time, and now they're heading out of the timeout with a one-point lead, and they're hoping to keep, continue the success that they've been building. They've had good defense, but their offensive execution has been fantastic the last few points. And Washita, I, I don't want to say that they're scrambling, but they're, they're also they're right there. It doesn't feel like Monticello really should have a one-point lead. It feels like it should continue to be tied. The Blossoms continuing that momentum off of a loss. They're still looking for their first win of the year and in conference play. However, fresh off their best showing on Saturday against Lee, a five set thriller where the Blossoms were on the short end. However, looking to avenge that right here with another match in Arkadelphia. Here's the set by Hansen. Looking for Steinmeier. Kill attempt is blocked, but it goes out of bounds. Well, I think for Washita, continuing the play on the backs of Kayla Steinmeier and Riley Brazil definitely has to be a part of the game plan. Been two of their better players so far in this set. Kellen Church will serve it away. Excellent play at the net by the Tigers. In on the play, Kayla Steinmeier joined by Haley Fairchild. Yeah, Monticello was just a little too slow in reacting there, just an easy point for Washita. But the Blossoms getting that point right back. I will note that Washita has had a few service errors, maybe like three or four in this set alone, which is pretty uncharacteristic of them. As Stasha Adams having a conversation with one of the officials. Not really sure what about. And Adam's going to go communicate with Coach English. Again, not sure about, but Welton is going to be set to serve here. Chris, if if this tells you about how tight this match has been, we're currently tied up at 18 points apiece. This is the eighth tie between these two teams, excluding the 0-0 tie that we started with in the second set. We'll see who can gain the upper hand. And it'll be the Blossoms. Credit the kill to Evelyn Dang, the outside hitter. Yeah, they're continuing to just try to play with a lot of heart and a lot of passion and they're playing hard with a lot of different players it's you know I had said that Welton and Jordan were like two of the key players to start this game for Monticello but they've been using a lot of different playmakers Haley Fairchild will get the kill for Washita that is her fifth of the night Jouse set to serve it away. It's a service error. Great chance here for the Bowl Weevils to continue on the momentum. Low serve, good dig by Jouse. Feather touch from Fairchild, but a strong play at the net by Evelyn Dang, able to get a feather touch of her own right back over the net. Yeah, that was such a smart play by Dang. And you know, I know that Fairchild thought she had that point, but Dang 
Just got a finger on that ball, pushed it over. Now have a two-point lead. Chance for Brazil. Set by Hanson, looking for Brazil again. And that time, the Blossoms couldn't recover in time. Well, they hadn't gone to Brazil in the last few possessions. Went to her that time, and obvious result. Brazil leading with nine kills in this match. That's the most from either side. Jasmine Welton leading the Blossoms with six kills. And Allison Gresham, defensive specialist, checks in for Welton. Welton going to get a much-needed breather. There's the dig by Kisgen. Set now. Gardner looking for the kill. And she gets exactly that. What a set. The tenth tie we've had in set number two. Both teams jockeying for position for the Tigers. Looking to put themselves one set away from a victory in set number three if they can claim set number two right here. But for the Blossoms looking to even it up going into set number three. We'll see what happens when we come back from this break. You're watching Tiger Volleyball on the Washita Sports Digital Network presented by Taylor King Law. Whether you realize it or not, you see the work of bats and signs all around Arkadelphia. When you see the Badger equipment trailer on the way to a Badger game, Bats and Signs did that. When you're watching the Badgers, Tigers, or Reddies and see the signage that just really makes their facilities pop, Bats and Signs did that too. You see the signage in downtown Arkadelphia on the campuses of Washita and Henderson or the sign in your neighbor's yard supporting a candidate or their favorite Badger? Yep, Bats and Signs did that too. Longtime residents and supporters of all things Arkadelphia called Mark, Jared, Chris, or Ryan at Bats and Signs today to see what they can do for you. Three. This is Kellen Church. Thanks for tuning in to the Washtenaw Sports Digital Network. Welcome back to Tiger Volleyball on the Washtenaw Sports Digital Network presented by Taylor King Law. What an exciting set number two. This has been 10 ties between these two teams. But Kylie Kisgen looking to give the Tigers the upper hand on the serve. But it's Gardner coming up with the kill at the net. Yeah, right away took advantage. Nobody from Monticello was exactly prepared for that play. Nobody was home up front. Another serve from Kisgen. Bit of miscommunication there. And the Tigers now two points away from claiming set number two. With that, the Blossoms want to talk things over. We're going to stay right here, Chris, because this has been a strong showing from both teams here in set number two. Washita has had the momentum at times, but really this is their strongest chance to pull away. Yeah, it really has. Uh, they have the momentum and a two-point lead. They just need two more to finish off this set and try to finish out this game in the third set. But Washita has to keep feeding their playmakers. Brazil has had a remarkable set so far with and overall today has nine kills. Also got to start feeding a little bit more of Haley Fairchild, who has five. She hasn't necessarily been as impactful this set as she was in the first set. I imagine they changed that up a little bit. We've got a great crowd here at Spec for a Tuesday night match. This is a crazy time at Washita because not only do you have all the athletic events going on, but you've got Tiger Tunes in preparation for homecoming. A lot of clubs making their last preparations with that. But we have got a packed house here tonight at Spec. And these home fans are loud and proud. Yeah, and we can't really see them, but I do know at least the women's basketball team is in attendance right below us tonight. Leah Gardner. The freshman does it again at the net. And that is going to earn an uproar from the home crowd as it's now set point. Thanks to another point from guess who, Leah Gardner. Yeah, had a conversation with Coach Frizz before the season started for volleyball and uh, said one of the players to look out for was Leah Gardner who was going to start right away. And it's pretty evident why she made that decision 
for the true freshman. Still set point for the Tigers. There's the set by Hansen. Gardner looking for the kill. Had a couple opportunities there, but the Blossoms were able to recover. Meanwhile, a block. Blossoms recover yet again. The set, another chance for Gardner, and it couldn't end any better way. Leah Gardner, the freshman, stepping up with another point for the Tigers. She has them one set away from their first victory in Great American Conference play. Yeah, continue to trust the freshman, making big plays there, winning that set. And I imagine that Monticello is going to have to key in on her coming in to this potentially this final set for them. Four of the last five points in that set for the Tigers were all kills by Leah Gardner. What an outstanding match it has been for her and for the entire squad. Now with a great opportunity to claim that first conference win of the season and really a great place to establish that momentum going into the rest of GAC play. But before that, we're going to go ahead and take a timeout here on OSDN. You're watching Tiger Volleyball, and we'll be back after this timeout. No matter where you go in Arkansas, you'll probably run into someone you know. That personal connection is what I love about this state, and it's why we have offices and people across Arkansas. People who share your interest and care if you've been hurt. A local team who will be on your side, by your side. So if you were injured in an accident, call us at 1-800-CAR-WRECK. No matter where you live in Arkansas, we have an office nearby. We'll be on your side, by your side. Captain Henderson House. We're a home to call your very own when you're away from yours, with a porch to end your night on, surrounded by friends sharing stories and old times, and a yard with memories of summertime weddings and picnics after the game. We are so thankful for the life this house has seen for nearly 150 years. Come stay with us and join in on our stories. Captain Henderson House, Inn and Events. Uh, I've heard people say, oh, a cheetah. Oh, Wichita. A cheetah. Oh, a cheetah. Is it pronounced oh, a cheetah? Searching for Washita Baptist University. <laughs> Back in Texas, everybody pronounces it Wichita, but really, it's Washita. 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 How would you pronounce it? Washita. Washita. It's Washita Baptist University. Get it right. It's Washita, people. It's Washita. Washita. Welcome back to Tiger Volleyball on the Washita Sports Digital Network, presented by Taylor King Law. As we come back, Chris, hand clap by Fitz in the Tantrums playing over the speakers here. This home crowd has had a lot to clap for in these last two sets. They really have, and especially coming out, coming down into those last few clutch points with Leah Gardner really making a huge impact. And as you mentioned before we headed into break, four of the last five points or from Leah Gardner. So just excellent play for the true freshman. It looks like she's set to start out this third set as well. But a new name we haven't seen tonight is Erin Dawson going to begin this third set. She really started off hot to begin the season, looking to continue that streak here in the set. Great opportunity here for Dawson, the sophomore out of Frisco, Texas, playing alongside another DFW native and Emily Adams. Riley Brazil, another athlete from the Lone Star State down there with him too. Yeah, I think Coach Frizz really, she likes to recruit down there. Here's the opening serve. 
And it's another service ace for the team leader, Courtney Hansen. Well, if that's indicative of how this set's going to go, I'm thinking Tiger fans are going to be pretty happy. First point does a lot to set the tone. We'll see how UAM responds. Very well, in fact, Chris, as that was a nice play there from Kerrigan Biggs. Yeah, as I mentioned, you know, Washita with the early easy point, but Monticello coming right back and showing, hey, we're still here. Allison Gresham with the serve, and it just does go over the back line. Good eyes there by the Tigers because that was very close. Yeah, that was very close. If I was out there, I would have gone for it. I probably would have messed up just knowing me, but I probably would have still gone for it, but good IQ by the Tigers. Meanwhile, Erin Dawson making her presence felt early there, helping Emily Adams out with a block. It will be point for the Blossoms, though, because it did go out of bounds. It's close. Strong kill attempt there from Steinmeier, but it was a bit too far to the left. And the Blossoms lead this third set 3-2. to two. We've talked about it all night long, Chris. It's been tough sledding at times for this young Blossom squad, but continuing to show that competitive spirit night in and night out as the Tigers tie this up at three. Yeah, and right away, Aaron Dawson with the point there right away, though she does check out. Strong play at the net by the Tigers. That's Kayla Steinmeier and Leah Gardner in on the play. Yeah, that was a sort of poor defensive execution. Every, all six players sort of came up to the, that one spot. Nobody was back. Easy point for Washita. Off the service error, it's now four all. And an opportunity for Jordan Ware to serve it away. Line drive, dig by Steinmeier, set by Hansen. Adams with the kill. Well, we didn't see a whole lot of her in that second set, but she obviously is making her present, presence fell early in the third. Setting up for Welton. And not much that Kiskin could do that time, going down for the low dig. But again, Welton. She's got a great vertical, and that allows her to generate plenty of velocity on those kill attempts. That time, no different. Yeah, you're exactly right there. There's a reason why she has over 80 kills on the season. One of the more underrated players in this conference. Meanwhile, Kayla Steinmeier. Her kill attempt was deflected, but it had enough forward momentum to stay on the UAM side. And the senior has yet another kill. Nice block at the net by Gardner. High in the air, still a chance for the Tigers to regroup. Gardner with a nice play there at the net. Just to get it back over, now a chance. Trying to find the open spot. Great save by Brazil, and now Church trying to find that back corner, but it was a bit too strong, and that will be a point for UAM. It was a good rally by both teams. Both teams had to scramble at various points, making some hustle plays. Thinking Coach English may have thought that the score was wrong. I'm not sure she had a brief comment with the official. Credit the service ace to Stasha Adams. The senior helps her team take the lead in set number three. Meanwhile, there's the equalizer on the service error. 
And Chris, this one shaping up much like the second set where these teams go back and forth. Plenty of lead changes and plenty of ties. Yeah, exactly, but the problem for Monticello in that second set was they sort of just ran out of gas and Washita took advantage. And Blossom's not looking to repeat that same effort. And we've seen the Tigers struggle with similar problems at times this season. However, we've really seen improvements in that category, especially over the weekend in the Tiger Ready Invitational. Yeah, I think playing back-to-back -back games can wear you out, but it also prepares you for conference season against very tough opponents. There's the dig by Joust, set. Dawson, chance for the kill. But the Blossoms do recover. Now Brazil, feather touch. Excellent save by Silva. Hansen looking for the misdirection. But the Blossoms were ready. Now Brazil looking for the kill. It's a point for the Tigers. The Blossoms are in disbelief. They thought that that one was over the back line. But the line judge was right there to make the ruling, and it's a point for the Tigers. Yeah, that one was really close, and if we had the ability of replay, I bet you Coach English would have been really wanting that. Valiant effort at the net that time by the Blossoms, but it will be a point for the Tigers. I don't know if you saw, Chase, but that that last sort of kill attempt by Scroggins, it looked like she was going up to have a big spike and then, like, switched her arm under the ball to hit it up. It was weird it got over the net, but it was just a little strange. I don't know if that was meant to be trickery or, or if it was just a mid-air adjustment based off the position of the ball. But it was interesting, and... I'm curious if she's going to be able to be effective using that. Gresham with the serve. Set by Hanson. Dawson with authority. And it will be a point for the Tigers. As the center officials are making a motion up towards the partition at the top. Yeah, so I think Coach English was a little confused why that was a point for Washita, but that's because if it does hit the partition and goes on the opposite side of the team that hit it, then it is a point for that opposite team. I, I totally made that probably more confusing than it was as Dawson got the point there. The sophomore from Frisco, Texas, coming up with another kill for OBU. But what I was meaning to say was since it hit, since Monticello hit the partition and it landed on Washita's side, then it's Washita's point. But earlier in the game, Monticello hit the partition and it landed back on their side and it was still in play. Meanwhile, the Tigers out to a three-point lead and now just a dozen points away from a sweep and their first victory in Great American Conference play in this 2023 campaign. Serve yeah. from Kisgen. Set by Hanson Gardner with another kill. What a night for the freshman, her seventh kill of the night. Yeah, she's had many of nights just like this one. But she doesn't even look like a freshman out there with her control in this one. And what a play by Adams there at the net. Going to force the Blossoms into a timeout. Well, the young players on the front line certainly stepping up for the Tigers here in set number three. As the Blossoms take a moment to talk things over, we're going to take a break ourselves. You're watching Tiger Volleyball on the Wachita Sports Digital Network, presented by Taylor King Law. Make Print Mania in downtown Arkadelphia your place to get embroidery, screen printing, trophies, and more. Drop by their store on Main Street in downtown Arkadelphia or visit their website at printmaniatees.com to see how they can help your business or group. 
Need a shirt for an event? Let Printmania take care of that. Need promotional materials for your business or organization? You can let Printmania take care of that too. A family-run local business in Arkadelphia, Printmania has been serving the public since 1992. Call Printmania today, 870-246-3803. Welcome back to Tiger Volleyball on the Washita Sports Digital Network presented by Taylor King Law. The Tigers just 10 points away from their first victory in Great American Conference play this season. And on the flip side of that, the Blossoms of UAM looking to rally. But the Tigers gonna keep the momentum rolling for now as Kayla Steinmeier in on the block along with Leah Gardner. Walton looking for the kill, and again, the Tigers step up on the front lines. That's Emily Adams. Yeah, that front line is really making it difficult for the Blossoms, and it's something that Washita has been trying to improve upon all season long. And it's definitely looking good here today. Bit of a misfire there, so that will slow the momentum momentarily for the Tigers. That ends a run of five straight points. Steinmeier with the dig. Said now goes back to Steinmeier. Chance for Welton, it's blocked. Gardner. She was challenged well. Excellent counterattack that time from UAM to get it back over, and the Tigers weren't able to recover in time. Yeah, Gardner was just trying to go back and forth between herself and that Blossom front line and couldn't connect on one of those balls, and advantage for the Blossoms. Here's the set by Hanson. Looking for the kill. That's Gardner, and she's got it. Make it eight on the night for the freshman from Crandall, Texas. I got to say, the sort of the best player on the court these last two sets for the Tigers has been Leah Gardner, without a doubt. Here's the set. Looking for the kill at the net, and it's blocked. Kayla Steinmeier stepping up on the play. Yeah, it's not easy going up and blocking one of Welton's spikes but Steinmeier did with no fear and brilliant execution. It's another point for the Tigers on a double hit. It's the 20th point of the set for Washita and now the magic number down to five. And yeah, Monticello sort of just unlucky with some of these calls. Their execution, you can tell they're sort of running out of gas. Their vertical leaps haven't been as high as they had been. And now we're going to have a timeout by the Blossoms. Just a short timeout here. So we're going to stay here, Chris. What a third set this has been for the Tigers. Had a strong showing in the first set, despite some adversity late. The Blossoms able to piece together plenty of points there at the end, but the Tigers able to hold them off. Then that second set really seemed like it was anybody's set from the get-go, and then at the very end, the Tigers pulling away. Leah Gardner, a big part of that. Four of the last five points came off of her kills, and she's been a big factor here in set number three as well. Tigers with a nine-point advantage. You have to feel like if the results stand as they currently look, Right now, this is going to be a marquee win for the Tigers to get them started on their way in conference play. Yeah, definitely. A first uh, first conference win of the season is always a good thing for any team. As now we have substitution between Hanson and 
Davis, or the, the official, hasn't signaled yet. I think he's just sort of toying with them. There we go. And now Ellie Davis checks into the game. Kellen Church will serve it away for the Tigers. There's the dig by Adams. Looking for the kill. Nice save by Kisgen. Now Steinmeier looking for a kill of her own. And the Blossoms not going down without a fight. Ball's deflected off a couple of Tigers. And UAM has drawn back within eight. Well, that's what Monticello has done every set. They don't give up. And they don't make it easy for any team that they're playing against. And they're trying to stay in every chance they can get. And that's another point for UAM. As it looked like that was Campbell Horn on the kill. Service error as the Tigers now down to three points away from victory. Yeah, the Blossoms trying to rally here, but sort of little mistakes like that, not going to help them any. Served by Avery Joust. She was tied for the team lead. And Ace is coming into this match. She makes a great dig there. Brazil trying to get it back over. She does so successfully. Set by Ware, now looking for the kill. It's over the back line, point for the Tigers. Yep, and just two away from a sweep here. As I believe Welton's down tying her shoe. And play will resume. The Washita, such an excellent showing here in this third set. Blossoms have really been on their heels since that they were all tied at seven. But yeah, just thinking about it, this game was tied and was back and forth, literally point back and forth, you know, by point. But this game was tied at seven. Washita just really pulled ahead, and now they're just one away from victory here. Tension building at Sturgis Physical Education Center as the home fans have their brooms at the ready. Looking for a sweep of UAM. There's the dig. Now looking for the kill. It's blocked, and count the sets, one, two, three. That's a Tiger victory. Yeah, I believe that was both Davis and Dawson in there on the block, an excellent defensive play by Washita. That front line has looked outstanding all night long, as I mentioned. It was something that they really wanted to improve upon as the season went on, and they certainly did that here tonight. And really that last play there, Chris, emblematic of this win for the Tigers because it was all about the play on the front lines. Leah Gardner. And Aaron Dawson making the final play for Washita. We're gonna take a quick look at the stats because Chris, this is a big win. For the Tigers. Visit the Washita Campus Store for all your Tiger apparel, merchandise, and gifts. If you need something to wear to show your Tiger pride, stop by the Washita Campus Store on the bottom floor of the Evans Student Center to grab a t-shirt, sweatshirt, polo, or more. If you can't stop by the store on campus, visit us online at bookstore.obu.edu. Make your purchase and we'll send it to you. Support the Tigers by checking out the Washita Campus Store. Go Tigers. And of course, it's always good to have one of your opportunity for Washita to get some confidence and continue building upon the success and now I believe this is now a three game winning streak for Washita. Really quick before we go, Leah Gardner 
with eight kills on the night. Breakout win for the freshman, and then Courtney Hansen with 32 assists. This is going to be a big win for the Tigers. They are now 1-1 one one in Great American Conference play with the loss. UAM falling to 0-2 in conference play, but this is a team that looks like they could make some noise, even though they've had their ups and downs in the early season. This is a team that has shown fight night in and night out tonight, no different, and they showed some flashes of brilliance. This is a young team that looks like they could be a contender here in a few years in the GAC. Yeah, they're, as you mentioned, they're very young, but they have a lot of energy and passion, even though they're still f searching for that first win on the year. Them entering every contest with that same amount of energy is something you'd never see. And I think that's always going to be a positive that they can take away is that they love what they're able to do and they're very confident coming into every match. Well, that's going to do it for Tiger Volleyball on the Washita Sports Digital Network presented by Taylor King Law. We will be back with a couple of soccer matches here over the next couple of days, so stay tuned to our social media pages for more information. But for Chris Gay and the rest of our crew here at the Washita Sports Digital Network, this is Chase Hartzell signing off. Have a great evening, and go Tigers.